No, this is actually a nice area. But the whole point is, they did like in the middle of the night, right? Like in Tallinn. So this is caused a whole. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
broke out. Anyway. And we had to go down there. I don't know why I need to come because I don't say anything. I'm like, really? <laughs> Not my family, man. I'm, I'm going to keep emotional. Last year. Like, whatever my wife said. Just yes. silence or? That's good. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm around long enough to know. <laughs> Whatever she said. Yes, dear. Yeah. 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 You don't even know what I just want to do. We should make it. No, 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 no. I appreciate it. I can't hear what he said. Just you want to address how the closed session went longer? Let me know when you're ready, bro. Sure. I can't. Well, we'll, we'll, after we get to that pledge, they never say happy. They never say happy. Thank you. What do you want to do? Why don't we? I think it's seven o'clock. Why don't we? So we're, we're now calling to order the regular meeting of the Sio Township Board of Trustees for April 11th. Um, we are, will uh, have the roll call uh, first, and then we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and we're operating without our clerks, so are you prepared to do the roll call again? So um, please uh, call the roll. Hathaway. Present. Palmer. Present. Clintoff is absent. Rosso? Present. Carey? Present. Noel? Present. Riser? Present. Okay, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we uh, launch into our agenda for this meeting, I want to uh, speak to the fact that some of you were um, here uh, at the beginning of our prior special meeting, and we had this idea that we were going to have a period of time where we were in closed session, and then we were going to come back into an open meeting and uh, be able to talk about things with members of the public present, and it wound up um, that we used all of the time for the, uh, that special meeting in closed session because there were uh, discussions that just kept going and going and questions that kept getting raised. And so I apologize to those of you who were waiting in, in anticipation that you would be able to join us for um, uh, a resumption of the open meeting uh, that uh, would have occurred at the, in the special meeting. It was. Um, Certainly, uh, a much more contentious discussion during the closed session than uh, I anticipated. Um, so, when will there be an open session of discussion? Well, um, that is a good question. Um, we don't have a plan right now for when we will have that discussion. Um, I guess it, it's possible that um, it could occur. We could have further discussion during this um, regular meeting. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but sometimes um, topics do come up. But we said we prefer to have that discussion when all the board members are here. So That's when right. Jessica is here, Donna and I said that. Okay, so I guess we'll try and have further discussion on um, roads funding issues when we have full attendance um, of all members of uh, the board of trustees. Um, the, um, that brings us to um, adoption of the agenda uh, for, oops, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Brought adoption of the agenda. Um, and before we do that, I want to announce um, that we are uh, pulling one item from the agenda, um, and that is item J2. Um, this was uh, the uh, possible action to decline responsibility for the Heritage Village wastewater utility system. And the reason for that is um, that um, the, uh, there's a desire to keep all of the matters related to um, Heritage um, Village, Heritage Woods, uh, that project uh, sort of moving together. We, that was our original intent. We separated this item and put it here because um, when we were putting together the agenda, there was um, uh, a thought that it would help to move um, forward the discussion and, the, uh, and clarify issues if we were to um, act on a uh, declination of the wastewater treatment plant. And then it was later determined after the agenda was published that that was um, not true, um, that there was not a necessity to do that. And so we decided to keep them together. And I apologize uh, again for um, that uh, sort of back and forth 
I know that doesn't happened before. We pulled put uh, heritage on the uh, agenda and then pulled it. In that case, it was at the request of the developer. In this case, um, it was uh, a new information that came th through to us after we put the published the agenda. Um, we do are we are trying to organize a discussion, a general discussion of wastewater treatment plants, not specific to the development, but just to inform. Um, the members of the board uh, prior to acting on the Heritage Woods um, site plan, final site plan decision. Um, and um, uh, we'll hopefully we'll have more information to share about that soon. Is there anything else besides removal of J2 for the agenda before we approve it? I move the agenda. Okay, so we have a motion by riser to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Palmer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Mm -hmm. So the agenda is adopted. That brings us to communications to the board of trustees. These are included in the meeting packet. Um, and um, that brings us next to public comment. Uh, this is a time for members of the public to speak for up to three minutes on any matter under the purview of the Board of Trustees. Um, Trustee Riser, will you serve as our timekeeper again? I will. All right. Uh, we begin with those who are here present in the hall, and then we turn to those who are participating remotely. Is there anyone present here who would like to speak during public comment? If so, please come up to the table and, and address the board. My name is Dave Spicer, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, proposed Heritage Woods. I did send you got people an email earlier today, you know, if you got it or not, it was a follow-up for what I sent back in January. And uh, has there been any decision by the board on my lever for direct ingress to 525 Baker Road? And has there been any discussion with Alan Green about a boulevard agreement between a developer and the neighbors to the south of the proposed boulevard? I don't believe Alan Green has contacted our attorney, Fred Lucas. And is there any grants that you're aware of that could help pay for a sewer system down Baker Road? And per Dan Johnson's statement about me not purchasing a travel trailer, we have owned and still have our travel trailer for 1999 along with a motorhome from 1985. And our purchase of a larger RV is on hold right now because of my stroke. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Eugene Kett. I am here to talk about Encore at Heritage Woods. I live at 609 Baker Road, which is the property that borders the south side of the boulevard property. I, uh, this this development is going to surround me. I have a total of 2,000 feet of common ground on the boundary uh, north of the boulevard. When I speak about having a, the light pollution and uh, why there's no barriers, fences, berms, um, I'm, I'm talking about all of the property, not just this property to the south. I've noticed, uh, you know, in the public comment when Dan, Dan Johnson replies to questions, I, I just wanted to clarify that. It's just not the property at the boulevard. I have property to the north that borders the east side of the development. Approving the development allows a private business to control the future of my property, allows private business to run and control the wastewater treatment plant, which could fail and cause a massive calamity. Why in the world wouldn't the township run a sewer to the development and change uh, in, in charge of the developer. Uh, any future occupant of my property will be forced to pay to use the boulevard and will be charged at the discretion of the developer. Uh, if I put a one of if a, another competing convalescent home wants to go on the property, I would think they would be hit with a bit of a um, little bit of a brick wall on that. Uh, <clears throat> Board members were elected or appointed to the board because you care about this community, expecting to fiercely protect our streams and rivers. I would assume that you cared about the residents, not putting them in a position of complete, complete manipulation. 
there's a line of massive oak trees on the that, that were just marked to be taken down by the development on the east side bordering my property. Uh, these were just recently marked. I questioned if these, if uh, those are on my property or not. It does show them as on the development property. Uh, the entire the environmental sustainability task force. I'm not sure if they know about this. These are you know 175 year old trees, just massive specimens. Um, you know, maybe they don't care. Maybe it's not that big a deal to them. Uh, my father bought in the 60s. Who the property? That's the property to the south of me. I have uh, just under nine acres that are going. That's going to be adversely affected by this. Uh, watching the manipulation, this development has gone to have gone this far with the township, with private meetings, uh, with scheduling, with canceling. Uh, this development has been the worst possible experience I've had with this township. I'm Kathy Spicer, living at 525 Baker Road, Dave Spicer's uh, wife and a neighbor of Eugene Cat, who just spoke. And I'm here to support my husband, Dave, and my neighbor and their issues that they've spoke of already about Heritage Woods and the Boulevard especially and how it impacts our lives and our property. Um, I want to present just a small concern to maybe somebody else, but it's a big concern to me and to us. about the inability that I think there, has, there is an inability to have a timely emergency response to our homes because of the boulevard and the way it has to be traveled. A fire truck needs to travel all the way down the boulevard, and I think you guys have put it, and Mark's mentioned, maybe a quarter mile down to finally turn around and then travel east to get to our homes. I looked it up, fire trucks are about 56 feet or more longer, okay, to get to our homes. An ambulance enters the boulevard to get to our homes, the same as a car would. It's a smaller little turnaround to get uh, to the entrance of our homes. But if there's five cars lined up in the boulevard, stopped by a red light to go out onto Baker Road, then there sits the ambulance behind those five. How are they going to get past them in a timely manner, wait for the red light, I don't know, and then get to our home? Um, it's just, just a big concern that, again, I'm all for common sense, like I said the first time I spoke before. Um, just because I just lived with my husband who just had a stroke and realized that firsthand how fast medical intervention is critical. Very critical, especially in a stroke. You can't do CPR to help a stroke patient. Um, so that is my biggest concern with the boulevard and the way it's been um, constructed. The other thing I wanted to mention that I don't know if people are aware, but our, you know, the electricity was out in February for four and a half days, all up down Baker Road. And um, it also was in August. And it has other years been. And those traffic lights there at Baker Road intersection with the 94 entrance exit ramps, and then the future Heritage Woods entrance is going to be there. Those traffic lights were out for the, all those four days. It was really scary. You see people 50 mile an hour Baker Road buzzing down that road like it's dark. You can't, you know, stop like you do when there's traffic lights that are out, um, you know, in Ann Arbor. And nobody knew about it. I finally called DTE at midnight, got a real person the one time. And they go, you can't, we don't know about that, according to them and in their computer system, I'm sure. But until I mentioned it, she said they didn't even know it, even though we'd been calling about our home with the address being out of electricity. Well, after I called that midnight, guess what? The next day, they, they at least got the traffic lights going. But that intersection was really a scary situation. And I know Don has mentioned, everybody's mentioned, MDOT says this is the safest and the best way. And probably, and maybe it is, but that was a scary situation. I don't know if people really knew that that existed. And it's not just this. Uh, you know, last two episodes. So I thought I'd mention that too. Thank 
Thank you. Uh, whom else uh, present would like to speak during public comment? Please come up to the table. If there's no one else, oh. Right over. Right over. Hey, everybody. All right. Sorry, I have my other documents since I prepared notes for earlier. A uh, couple of things this evening. Uh, number one, uh, G5, not generally something I'd love to see a, on a consent agenda that we offer someone employment. I, I think it should be an action item, even if there isn't much discussion. It just seems better to actually have a, a formal motion, you know, more respect at least. Uh, G6, um, my understanding of how this process worked from the attachment on this item, at least, doesn't seem like it followed our township bid process. Um, and as a violation of the procurement policy. So in the future, if we could follow that, that would be awesome. Uh, G7, uh, I reviewed that. It makes sense for the most part, except for the fact that it excludes the fire department. Ultimately, it seems to be something that only occurs a handful of times throughout a decade. So something we probably should include the fire department under. Um, Treasurer Palmer, a question for you. I went back through all the first quarter uh, agenda packets, as well as the minutes. And I also looked on the budget and finance section of the website. Did we have an investment report for the first quarter at all? It'll be at the next meeting. So, okay. gotcha. Um, the statements. Got it. Um, the other thing, other two items I have for you, uh, I would encourage you to move forward with taking action on Arbor Groves. Um, obviously, they've also been to almost every meeting I have and probably maybe a few I haven't. Uh, I think that we owe them an answer to their uh, continued request for action. And finally, I know that you uh, weren't able to come back to public uh, meeting or I guess public session uh, after your closed session, uh, but I still think it's truly good right and salutary to return the funds that are in the road SAD fund to the taxpayers that paid into it. Failure to do so likely will involve someone taking action. Um, Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Alan Grabano, representing the low density Parkwood. Uh, my name's. As you know, there are two factions at Parkwood. We have a um, governing board, which is the HOA, and we have a low density Parkwood. Our group is it always been not against for development per se, but uh, just a reasonable number. We're looking hopefully, you know, like 10, 12, 13, 14 units based on the four acres that are there that's buildable. Um, the current governing board has been in negotiation for approximately 13 months. They're speaking with the planner, the developer, OHM. We have not been at that table as far as low density representation, no voice. Uh, lately, and like I said, this is kind of a brief update, uh, in, early, in early March, March 8th, uh, the governing board put out a notice to our residents seeking uh, questions, like open questions on the Arbor's Grove issue. Uh, we kind of ginned up our support in terms of getting questions to the board so we can get some answers to things we need done or need answered. And we submitted 10 questions from nine different residents. And we have several more in the hopper, you know, going, going toward them. Unfortunately, we have just seen one answer of substance, and that had to do with the uh, Force Main Sanitary Sewer System, which is a pressurized system, you know, electrified, so forth and so on. And uh, we, we learned that there is no backup generator for this system, which is uh, concerning. Our second question was, uh, there are no basements in Arbor's Grove. So our second question was, a, na a natural reservoir for such a so such a hazard uh, would be for the raw sewage to possibly go into people's basements in a normal setting. But uh, there are no basements, so we asked where the raw sewage would be migrating to. And then secondarily, if there's any kind of a warning system for Parkwood in place or proposed to, to warn us of such, of such an event. And lastly, I would just remind uh, the trustees that uh, a resolution was passed on November 20, I'm sorry, October 25th, for a resolution to discuss the return of 21021 to the Planning Commission. 
in general, we hope that will happen soon. And we would happily provide our question list as it is today or even more because it's growing to that planning commission. Uh, that would be a good, a good starting point for them to uh, address for us, among others. So lastly, our extremely high density proposal is not in the spirit of the SIO master plan, 35 units on less than four acres. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? I have a presentation. Can I plug into the... No, I'm just kidding. All right, so um, just want to review what... Hey, Mark, how you doing? I uh, just wanted to review for a minute what happened uh, prior to this meeting for anyone who wasn't at the special meeting. We came primarily to hear how the $2 million that by law needs to be returned back to Sio Township residents who paid into the SAD, the 2013 SAD, um, we, we came because we believe that money needs to be returned to Sio Township residents because that's the law. And what's happened is we have a supervisor who has hired an attorney and spent tens of thousands of dollars to get the answers that he wants. Uh, and so by working towards that, they come up with legal reasons as to why they shouldn't have to return that money. So as we were sitting here, we were asked if we would mind to leave because they wanted to go into closed session. And they said, we're just going to talk for a few minutes and then we'll come back in open session and we'll have a, a wider open conversation. So we left and uh, sat and some folks left, some folks. We, we text each other. An hour and a half later, here we are at this meeting with, with uh, barely any discussion. I, I asked prior to this meeting what's going to happen um, from... What I could tell, a 90 minute by the supervisor's admission, uh, uh, a little more contentious than they, would, they thought, it's pretty clear there's a large faction, or at least a faction, of our BOT that wants to keep the money that by law has to be returned to the residents. Now, I started while I was waiting out in the car, I spent some of my time working out a spreadsheet and built a little model like, what would, what, what would this look like? You know, do we just take all 6,100 lots and throw the money at them evenly? That doesn't seem fair. Some of those people didn't even pay in. So we have to remove them from the pool. There's also some people who uh, um, uh, did receive benefit, right? And so we have to remove them from the pool. And if you do that, you know, you, know, you do the calculus to get the exact numbers. But if you do a nice little curve, it turns out that the amount that needs to be returned to each resident doubles per lot. There are people who have three, four lots, and you're talking about thousands of dollars. So I implore you to not push this to the point where residents have to spend their money twice to engage with attorneys to get our money back. All right. And the reason we pay for it twice is because we got to pay for our attorney and we got to pay for your attorney because your attorney's paid with our tax dollars. Please don't do that. Please return the money as the law states. Don't make this a closed session. Follow through with your promise. Have an open session and allow our residents to understand what's going on. And please hire a finance director. For God's sake, it's been what, like two years now? Please, you guys, this $2 million belongs to us. Is there anyone else present who would like to speak during public comment? I just want to be in support of the Parkwood community. They have been coming here and they're not a mouth like I am. And patiently, like I said, people are having to spend money on attorneys because of decisions on this board or lack of decisions. And that's a vernal forest over there. Anybody who knows, even where I live, that probably should not have built, been built. It's against our wetland ordinances. There's no enforcement of a lot of these ordinances, whether it was the people with the party barns or why we had to go through such things about having the why thing about noise, because we are, we don't have enforcement and there are problems. But I look and I start connecting the dots on people. And when we could get FOIAs that weren't $7,000 to be redacted by Mr. Homier, and uh, only because Kathleen Brandt 
took a lawsuit against the township. This is what I'm talking about, these legal problems that shouldn't be occurring. They were wasting our money that could be built for sidewalks and bus stops to make things safer or traffic lights or some type of other infrastructure. And the same thing with the people with the on-site sewer system. I had to fight when Kathy Knoll stuck up for me and Jean King to be able to come to an on-site sewer system. That's the man on your compensation committee, Mr. Dries. And there's just a lot of awful lot of dots of connection here in the township that it's really disappointing to me. And I think Donna knows that because she's been here long enough and so has Kathy. And we are not headed in the kind of openness that we need. These people should not in their uh, retirement be having to fight on what is essentially a swamp. And they're very patient. They come here and they finally have reached out to a group of people. And I would be ashamed if I was on the board. And I know a couple of people are thinking of, this needs to go back to the planning commission and need to be rethinking. And Cortel had six, uh, uh, our past trustee, environmental. It doesn't take an environmental genius to, to go over there, walk around. Same thing with the blue hair. And if Anna Cohn hadn't gone over there, where's the PC meeting? We, we better be sending people out into these wetland in our areas before we let these developers just run roughshod. And you disappointed me when you called, uh, we're all paying water debt. You called a developer because you felt bad about that he was going to have to pay for some water hookups. It's all wrong. This has been a very wrong situation. But these people should not be having to put up with this uh, Aubrey Groves thing. And that's part of the Park, Park Road issue. So a big cut through that you guys didn't want, you and Vogel, to go through your neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? No. Um, is there anyone participating remotely who would like to speak during public comment? Uh, I currently do not see any. Well, here we go. <laughs> I said it slowly. Okay. Uh, Kathleen Grant will be first, followed by Rob Pattinson. Kathleen, go ahead. Uh, yes, Kathleen Brandt, SIO taxpayer. I, I held back because I really wanted Rob to go first. But anyway, um, I had a question. Uh, was um, Mark Brazo, were you in that closed session that just occurred? We're okay. Not. Thanks. Um, another question uh, for the uh, SIO fiscally concerned uh, residents. Um, have we gotten any word from the state on the enhanced reporting that they said they were going to do? Anybody get anything? Nothing? Cricket? I don't have an answer for you, Kathleen. You either have an answer. The answer should either be yes or no. I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't tell you of any communications, but I don't know that there haven't been any. Uh, thank you. Now, um, for the folks in the room there, uh, I just want to uh, add on to what Jonathan just said. Uh, we just sat through uh, starting at five o'clock uh, a discussion on roads. And uh, during that discussion, um, Mr. Hathaway said, oh, we'll just be gone for a little while and then we'll come back. And we set in place mechanisms to contact the people that were listening so they could hear the discussion during open session. And none of that happened. And so my public comments for the last session were that I didn't trust Mr. Hathaway to do the right thing. And I didn't trust Mr. Homier to do the right thing because they had boundaries. But it turns out they proved me right. They both proved me right. I couldn't trust them. They didn't come back to us. They were never coming back to us. I'm sure Will sucked the air right out of the room. Thank you. Rob? Rob Pattinson, and I don't see other hands up at this point. Rob, go ahead, please.
I see no other hands raised. I'd like to respond to that person. Oh, uh, Trustee Noel, please go ahead. Okay, so I want to respond to actually two people. Um, we thought when we went into close session, or, or I can say I thought it would be a 15 or 20 minute discussion, and it wasn't. So I think at the beginning, when we made the decision to go into closed session, the intent was to have a short discussion and then come back out and finish the discussion in open session. So nothing's resolved and we have agreed we're going to have a public discussion on the topic when we have all board members present. At the time we went into closed session, Mark was absent and Jessica was absent. So hopefully soon we will have this discussion publicly. I also wanted to respond to Rob Pattinson. You made a comment about the email from Bob Hyde where he notes a pre-existing non-conforming lot issue and that has been sent to our township attorney. So we're waiting for their opinion on that. Oh, please, Trustee Brazil. So again, uh, if you folks know, I've been here for less than a year, but I'm painfully aware of the challenges that we've had hiring both a finance director and permanent uh, township manager. I'd like to take some some salvo that we have narrowed a, can, uh, a candidate down. We had three candidates for the finance director. I think we're narrowing down to one, I believe. And I think we've also had a number of uh, managers, and I think we've got a preference, but we'll we'll see how that how that shakes out. Sadly, I I will tell you that we've had ideal candidates in the past, and for any number of reasons, things drag, and we lost a lot of I think good candidates from what I can see from the resumes that I saw, at least on the finance director side, and that's a shame. Um, what I've learned, and, and I've probably hired I don't know a thousand people in my career anyway, is you got to move quickly when you have somebody good. You know, quickly is 48 hours. Let's interview them, make a yes, no decision. If it's a yes, let's let's move fast because expeditiously because a good candidate is going to have the most opportunities. So uh, that's the direction that we're heading right now. Um, that needs to be, of course, I'm just one vote of many. And I think folks, other folks have to talk to those individuals yet. I have not talked to those individuals yet. I, I really recognize that. And I want to make it clear that just because we lost candidates, the one that for a finance director is we all agree that he's, he's really good. Yeah. I don't want to make it sound like we just scraped the bottom of the barrel. And <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. If I, I, didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't certainly didn't mean to apply that, but I, I am, what I am saying is going forward when we have any kind of uh, totally opening, agree. we've got to move expeditiously uh, when those candidates you know, become available. Good candidates are not going to last a very long time. Simple as that. Uh, with unemployment rate where it is right now, they, people have options no matter really what market you're, 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 you're in right now. Right. So I, that's just one thing I wanted to kind of resolve. Sorry. Thank you. 
Um, let's move on with the um, approval of the minutes. Um, if everyone has had a chance to look at the minutes from our uh, regular meeting of March 28th, are there any corrections to those minutes? None? No. Yeah, good, Will. All right. Well, I, let's dispense with going through page by page. Um, is someone prepared to move uh, approval move the of the minutes? Of the last so moved by Riser, support by Brizot. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the minutes are approved. Let's see. That uh, brings us to the consent agenda. Is someone prepared to move the consent agenda? I move the consent agenda. So moved by Riser, support by Noel. Um, in this case, we need a roll call vote because this contains payments. Okay. Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Rizzo? Yes. Kerry? No. Noel? Yes. Reiser? Yes. So the consent agenda is approved. That brings us to reports. Uh, we have some written reports in the packet. Um, and um, unless there are questions regarding the reports. So just as a point of information, to the extent that there are people here uh, who are going to be speaking to their project or consent agenda, thank you for showing up, but they're free to leave. Uh, you can stick around. Yes, but you're free to leave. I know some people came in from other counties and <laughs> I think it's, and they're probably relieved that, that it's all done with. But uh, thank, thank you for uh, thank you for coming and being available just in case. <laughs> so. Um, if there's no, no questions or comments, further comments about the reports, uh, let's, I'm sorry. That just, uh, just an impromptu report from last night's planning commission. Oh. Um, uh, please take a look at, and I know some of you have because you've mentioned it, the environmental sustainability and climate action plan that the planning commission has been working on. Uh, we had a presentation that some have alluded to from Mandy Graywall, who is a PhD planner from U of M, former mm -hmm. county commissioner, and um, maybe 12 years uh, in, in uh, uh, being the supervisor for Pittsfield Township. She talked about various projects that they have got going, uh, um, whether it's infill or whether it's uh, certain areas of the township with, with pathways, with, with green space, with density. And uh, there's a, a presentation on the power. You can, you can look at her uh, presentation and it was a, uh, very kind of her to come and speak to us. Uh, so there's that. Um, also, we consider the conditional rezoning for Palmer of Ann Arbor, which is a, um, a moving place that's going to increase their space. And they're, they're, it's a moving company located east of Baker Road on, on Jackson Road, and they want to build their warehouse, not that they have a storage facility, for people to store, but when people move houses, they have to keep things there for a while. So there, that was granted preliminary approval. That'll be coming to, to this board. Uh, and then finally, there is a distribution, but not consideration of a draft ordinances change to the PUD. So um, that'll come to this board as well too. So that's, that's the planning commission report. Thank you. Come what on. are the key changes in the draft ordinance? I, we just got them last night, so it was on the way out. So I will look at them, report back, or I'll give you a call. Okay. But they're on the planning commission. Uh, Jan gave them to us. Is Jan it and Doug gave them to us. Like the key changes. Yeah, it's a, the red line, so that they'll jump okay. up. Okay. Presumably, that'll be in the minutes from the planning commission meeting. Yeah, but it's more. Yeah, but it's in the no, because we didn't talk about it, so it won't. Oh, I see. It'll, it'll be. It's in the packet from yesterday. 
but when we talk about it, it'll be in the minutes, but it'll probably be discussed at the next planning commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. I, unless there are further comments or questions about reports, um, I think uh, we're ready to move on to the public hearing. And um, I uh, see that we have with us the um, applicant. Um, so Mark, do you wanna come forward? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, so um, generally what we do with the public hearing is we, if there's an app, if it's related to an application um, uh, of some kind, we let the applicant speak, present first, and then we open the public hearing and allow people to uh, comment. And obviously we um, allow remote participation as well, so. Sure, um, my able-bodied assistant is not here. We can start it after they're done with their presentation, we'll open the public hearing. That's typically what we do. Um, this is got off my tongue. No, it's good. Thank you. I apologize. I how many embarrassed tonight? The sewer backed up just before I left the office, and my wife is over getting stitches because she cut herself. So I apologize for being a little late. Um, I have a little presentation, which is for most of you a recap, but for the public that's watching, maybe uh, they'll see. Um, so you can share screen. So which which of you is going to be launching well, the shared I, screen? Doesn't really matter. I just need to be able to see my notes. Christy just, uh, Christy just needs to know whom to let in to do that. Um, we, just, uh, we need to go on the Zoom link. Is that right? Um, well, you'd need to be a panelist. I think admitted as a panelist and then given access to, sh to share your screen. Yeah, please join the able to get in to should we should we take a little break or something to allow uh, I think I'll be there in just a minute here. What's your name? Right. There we go. As I say, a lot of this will be recap, just to review. Yeah. To want to say. Yeah. So uh, thank you for the public hearing and for allowing us to present this evening. Uh, I'm Mark Smith, uh, Sam Township, lifelong Sam Township uh, resident um, and uh, owner, operator of MyHQ. Um, you can go ahead and advance the next slide. We're uh, MyHQ is a community-based uh, co-working business incubator uh, based here in Sio Township. We've been around for 23, now 24 years, going on 24 years. Um, in 2015, we uh, acquired, closed on the Gelman campus and expanded our business there to include now some 80 plus companies, uh, lots of startups across many different sectors. 
uh, created a campus, an innovation campus there that's been thriving and growing. And as such, we're, we're looking to expand into other sites. So next slide. Oops. Something happened here. <coughs> so uh, the reason we're here tonight is for the public hearing for our request uh, to act on a, a tax abatement for 300 North Zeeb. Uh, the tax abatement uh, is uh, is a tool that can be used for uh, incentivizing redevelopment of brownfield sites or other sites in the community. Uh, and it's quite frankly a helpful tool for us to help uh, offset some of the extraordinary costs related to redevelopment and uh, remediation of the existing 300 uh, Michigan site. Um, our investment is going to be between 10 and 15 million dollars on that site. And uh, we're going to be re redeveloping instead of uh, developing new green fields, uh, which, you know, for every acre that we redevelop, it has the equivalent of saving about 4.6 acres of green field uh, from development. Uh, we're bringing lots of high tech jobs and, and the types of businesses I think that we want to attract to the community. Next slide. <clears throat> Our goal is to reinvigorate the site, uh, which has been vacant for over 13 years. It's become a blight on our, in our community and, and is the front door of our township. Uh, and it's not the best representation uh, of the incredible businesses and technology we have here. Uh, and when we're successful, I think it'll attract additional similar businesses to the area. Next slide. Uh, with our planned investment, we will remediate and or cap the existing environmental contamination, asbestos, VOCs, and heavy metals. Uh, we'll renovate the interior, give the exterior a facelift, repave, and hopefully reduce the parking lot, re-landscape and beautify the site, including working with the neighbors to the north to create a vegetation screen, minimizing the visibility and lights from our site to our neighbors. Uh, we also plan to improve the water quality through the use of bioswales and filtration. Uh, we'll incorporate the use of waste energy harvesting and geothermal in our building system to minimize the impact on the environment. Um, and through the use of the PA 210 tool, uh, and it'll help us offset some of the extraordinary costs to redevelop this site. Go ahead, next slide. Um, sorry. Come on. So, uh, for the benefit of the public, you know, uh, I'm sure they want to know why, how, how to assess this project, its worthiness for uh, tax abatement or, or other benefits that we can get. And, you know, it's good to know how our project stacks up. So, through the uh, uh, PA 210 or the, the uh, commercial rehabilitation uh, jurisdiction or, or pro program, uh, there's been pretty good criteria established for assessing these, these projects. If you go on to the next slide. Uh, in our case, using the criteria that's widely adopted and recently used by Chelsea, um, we look at things like uh, the project location. It's in our DDA district and that would score at 15 points. Uh, job retention, we're going to be retaining uh, lots of jobs. More than six would qualify as 10 points. Uh, we're creating new jobs. We'll be creating 45 to 60 new jobs in the first year, an additional 45, probably significantly more than that in the second year and beyond. Uh, the project value of our, of our project is much more than a million dollars, which would score an additional 45 points under the criteria used in Chelsea. And we're renovating a long vacant property, more than 11 years, which garners another 15 points. Some of the other bonus provisions that would be considered if we're looking at the, uh, the scoring criteria, uh, will it have a significant impact, regional impact? Uh, the answer we think is yes. It brings lots of high-tech jobs and new businesses to the area. Um, it emphasizes emerging businesses and technologies, bioscience, life science, biotech, and energy storage. Um, and it um, offers some envir unique environmental impacts in that we're remediating a site. So when you add up all the points under that scoring criteria, we would score it at 550 points or more. And uh, based on this, the points, uh, Chelsea used the point totals to determine what kind of abatement the property might get. 
In our case, it's over the 90 point, point total uh, of 10 years. So go to the next slide. So what, uh, what does that mean to the township and what does that mean to the taxes? First of all, I wanna stress that it does not reduce the taxes that we're paying currently. Uh, the township and the DDA would continue to collect all the taxes that are currently being paid. It only abates the value on the, in, or the taxes on the increased value for a period of time. Um, and go ahead to the next slide. The thing that we, uh, we didn't realize when we were talking about the length of the abatement is how that might impact the township. And I am not sure that the entire board of trustees understood the ramifications of a uh, three versus a 10 year abatement. And so here we've got some scenarios, which I think were shared with you in a different form the other day. But uh, in scenario A, a three year abatement, the local taxing villages begin to be captured in year four. So the township saves 130,000 of its own taxes after the 15 year uh, TIF recapture. However, in, that, in those uh, first 15 years, the township contributes $350,000 more to that reimbursement from uh, for brownfield expenses. Conversely, uh, the state pays $350,000 less or <clears throat> stated otherwise, if we go to a 10 year abatement, more of the, uh, the recapture is paid by the state uh, instead of the township. And thus, you know, it saves township money in the earlier years. Um, so in summary, you know, you'd, you'd be paying 300, in the three year, you'd be paying 350,000 earlier, but would only save 130,000 later, uh, losing some money. And under the second scenario, uh, Sio Township would keep 70,000 of its own taxes and pay that $350,000 less towards the recapture. Go on to the next slide. So just for, by way of uh, history, the township has, has granted lots of tax abatements over the years, 70 in all that I counted, uh, and a couple of examples of uh, tax abatements given to existing companies that were in the township, uh, Kaiser Optical, uh, sorry, Creative Solutions, 7739000 for 12 years, Truma Cardiovascular, of uh, 12 years at 8 million, and that was one of multiple tax abatements they've received. Kaiser Optical was the most recent at 8.6 million for 12 years. So these were established companies in the uh, township when their abatement was granted. And, uh, you know, we, we thought that was important to point out. It's something that that's used as a good tool to help uh, incentivize companies to stay in the area, grow in the area, and sort of level the playing field when you look at the amount of property tax versus the value of the property as a function of percentage or operating costs. Um, that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I've got Brett here to answer questions on the actual dollars or other other questions you might have. Okay, so I'm a little confused because I thought the abatement and the brownfield issues were distinct issues. The, so those two incentives really overlap. And so the term of the abatement affects how the brownfield is reimbursed because the brownfield has a dollar amount that's reimbursed. During the term of the abatement, it can be reimbursed with to the extent that it's reimbursed with school tax dollars, non-local taxes, which means that the longer the abatement is during the brownfield reimbursement period, the more of that brownfield number that comes from non-local villages. So the brownfield is a number that's reimbursed based on the eligible activities that are present on the property. It's just that if it's reimbursed during the abatement or after the abatement, it's a different collection of millages that's available to reimburse it. <clears throat> and I noticed you used Chelsea as an example in your comparisons, but Chelsea is a city. And I'm wondering if you had any comparisons with other general law townships. 
I have not. The reason we picked Chelsea was when we started this whole conversation, the discussion was how to objectively score a request like this. And so Chelsea was the most recent and had adopted a, a set of criteria that's been used widely around the state. So it seemed to make sense. I agree, it's a city, not a general law township, but the criteria, I think, spread in townships versus cities is very similar to stand, sort of standardize the procedure. And I think that way, Ann Arbor Spark, um, in collecting some of that information, I think their motivation was to kind of go apples to apples between public or between political entities across the region so that whether you're a city or a township or anything else, there's no inherent benefit to be one place or the other in terms of um, incentives. Availability standardization. So, so I'm, I'm not sure. You done? All this I'm done. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go around it. For somebody's suggestion at one time, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> um, well, go, go ahead. Yeah. So, so, so where I'm a little confused. So the brownfield basically abatement is essentially, you know, as my understanding is, and I, I, I want to confirm this with the, uh, the uh, our legal counsel. But it, my understanding, let me say it that way, my neophyte understanding of it was. You know, in effect, it's a loan, right? So that you're you're going to you're going to go ahead and have these costs. You're going to go ahead and pay for these costs. You're going to kind of get these costs abated over over a period of time. And I think it's uh, if I remember, interest free. So I, what I'm what I don't understand is you said, okay, Mark, or okay, Silo Township, I should say, is right now we've got roughly an abatement of of a hundred and. Thirty thousand dollars. I think it's less than that for for Santa Township. Uh, according to by, by my numbers, anyway, <coughs> by the numbers I got from uh, from our assessor. And then he said, but somehow we're going to have a period of payback that somehow we get. It costs us three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I guess I'm confused by that because we don't really have to pay in or out of the Brownfield District program at all. So I guess I'm really confused by how that helps us, or frankly hurts us in, in either direction. <laughs> They pay the taxes and it gets reimbursed for as they have the expenses. Uh, I understand, but that doesn't so <coughs> subrogate our, our tax collection. How does that? How does that? How does that save us through? As I understand it, we're still going to. Well, I let them into that. But as I understand the process, <coughs> we're still you're going to pay taxes on what it's worth now, and you'll continue to do that. Right. And then taxes on valuation in future as it, as it goes up. Those are captured by us and then reimbursed by the county brownfield, Nathan vote, those folks, based on your giving him the receipts that say, hey, we got rid of this, we did this, we did this, and up until it, it runs out or the 10 year. Well, the, the abatement will happen right away. Um, so all that expense comes at the very beginning. And we have to present those, and they're not going to pay us back all at once. It's paid back. I'm sorry, for the brown bill, right. right. All of my expenses are accrued in the beginning. We have to prepare the property for redevelopment. That means my expense is 2.4 million in the next several months, uh, which I have to borrow that money to, to make that happen. So I'm carrying that as a liability and repaying it over, in this case, it'll be a 20 year amortization at probably seven, seven and a quarter, seven and a half percent. The taxes that are paid in are captured and redistributed to me incrementally over the period of the recapture, which in one scenario was 15 years and another 17 years. And I, I would maybe another way to think about it is that the property as it stands now is essentially in a tax abated condition in that it's taxed at a low taxable value relative to what a property like that might might sure, produce it's if it's developed. Product. Right. Right. And so when uh, someone goes in and redevelops property, in this case, the estimate is they have two point eight million dollars of brownfield activities on that property. And if they do that investment and if they are able to do the additional investment into the property to develop it into the highest and best use, then that taxable value goes up significantly. But what the PA210 abatement that's under consideration here does 
that it, it takes a taxable value that generally speaking would be applied to all the millages on the property and that school tax millages and local or non-school tax millages. So township, county, all that stuff. That school tax millage, that full taxable value would be applied to that school tax millage. But what the PA 210 does is it keeps temporarily the taxable value that's applied to the non-school millages at that pre-development rate. And that reduces the risk on the redevelopment and makes it easier to get financing to redevelop the property. But since it doesn't apply to the school tax millages, since that post-development taxable value is gonna to apply to the school tax millages, that means that even during the term of the PA 210 abatement, there's a spike in taxes on the property that then can be reimbursed it starts to eat away at that $2.8 million of costs that need to be done to deal with the indoor air issues, to deal with the metals issues, to deal with the obsolescence that's on the property. And so that's a source that can be used to help offset those brownfield costs, even during the term of the abatement. And what it means though, during the abatement is because that brownfield reimbursement, that 2.8 million is getting reimbursed through those school tax millages, and that that's where those funds are coming from during the abatement, that means that once the abatement's done and whatever's left of that 2.8 million, uh, million that is still to be reimbursed in the brownfield is then coming not just from the school tax revenue, but from the local revenue as well. So with a longer tax abatement, that what's left of the 2.8 million after the tax abatement is a smaller number, which means there's less of the township millages that are going to that. Now, I understand you're considering both the impact to the township from the PA 210, which essentially keeps the taxes as they are now, and then the reimbursement process that occurs after the 210 is done. So you have to consider all those things together. But the effect of longer abatement means that more of that 2.8 million is going to come from school tax revenue and less from township or local taxes. And that's kind of the nuance there. And it is a bigger bite, if you will, by the township, but that bigger bite, which Mark laid out, you know, we're, we're talking about a 15 year abatement plus reimbursement with the uh, three year tax abatement and a 17 year abatement plus reimbursement with the 10 year abatement. So that additional abatement gives Mark's development the ability to invest a lot more at a real cost to the township, but a relatively small cost compared to what can be done. And you know, the one relevant comparison is the status of the property now. It's essentially been abated for 13 years because it's just sitting there. And so how do we take it to the highest and best use? That's Mark's proposal. And that's the proposal here now. Not my turn yet. That's okay. That's all great. I, I like it. And by the way, I'm for Mark doing this property. Don't don't misconstrue my my questions. Right. I just want to do his best for Sion as well. That's why I'm here. That's on this side of the table, right? So what what I still didn't hear was how a longer abatement period has a cost to Sio Township of $350,000 versus $130,000. By, by the way, I don't think that number is accurate, the hundred and thirty, dollars but um, I can reconfirm that with our assessor. That's the part I'm still confused on. I don't understand where that delta is coming from. So I think the difference is the amount that is, what we're discussing is the amount of the brownfield, of, of the proportion of the brownfield that comes from Sio Township is smaller with a longer tax abatement than it is with a shorter tax abatement. But to your point, I think it's it's not saying, I, I don't think the point here is to say that the impact of Sio Township is overall less with a shorter tax abatement. Because in my mind, the, the relevant sort of metric for Sio Township is there's an abatement under consideration, there's a brownfield under consideration. And they are distinct, but they're linked together. 
And so ultimately, you're looking at at what point does Sio Township go to a post abatement, post brownfield taxable value and not taxes that are being reimbursed, but full taxable value that's going to Sio Township. And in the three year abatement model, that's after year 15, that's abatement plus brownfield reimbursement. And in the 10 year abatement model, that's in year 17, and that's brownfield plus abatement. And so that is a bigger request to Sio Township. And I think the point that Nathan Vogt from the county had made earlier is that it's not as simple though as A plus B because the way the brownfield works, it allows you to leverage other taxing jurisdictions. And the longer the abatement is in place and the more of that brownfield number that's disproportionately paid out of the school tax millages, relatively a smaller number of that brownfield piece is going to come from South Township. With that said, it also means that there's an abatement which is pushed out longer for Sio Township. But it's those two things in combination, really, that are operative for the township. Yeah. That's, how I, that's how I understood it. Yeah. So we're, we're good. Okay. We're going around. Go ahead, because I was sat in on the, the one we had here in house a week or so ago. With, oh, on the Brownfield. On the Brownfield. Um, Trustee Carey? Trustee so, Hazard. I want to kind of treat businesses who are deserving of this kind of fairly, not that we're not treating you fairly or unfairly, but you had a slide, if you could go back to it. What have we done for similarly placed businesses by way of year? You had a slide that I'm really interested in. Like, you know, why is Smith only three years, but other people are, what have we done? What's the range and where'd you get that data? That's publicly available data. Um, and it's a table actually that Spark provided when we started uh, looking at this. So, so Sion Township has granted 70 tax abatements over the past 20 years, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost $28 million. How, what, what's your abatement likely going to be? Well, the max would be 2.7, 2.8. That's the, the brownfield. What's your abatement? Oh, the abatement, no, it's 400 and uh, the total taxes saved is up in here. Uh, 485. Well, our abated taxes would be just over a million dollars. Okay. So, so in, in these abatement periods or 12, 12, 12, did you pick the highest three or the average? No, you know, not, pretty much all what, What's the range back? There were most almost everything I saw on that table was twelve years, and we're proposing in our our model motion, which is subject to change, uh, for a period of three years. You want that to be a different number? Have you seen the model motion in our packet? I did, and it says it, 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 you know it says that we uh, grant a commercial rehabilitation exemption for the real property. You still have to pay. Uh, excluding the land, you'd have to pay the tax on the land. You'd have to pay the tax on personal property, right? Yes. So it's just it's just the uh, the real property. Um, you, you want it to say a higher number, right? I, uh, yes, it, it would be better for me. There's a lot of trickle down things which we didn't get into that affect financing, cash flow, uh, loan covenants. All those things start to come into play with a three-year abatement versus a 10. Sorry, I got uh, distracted by the emergency parents from the lady who yes. got cut. You need to check in on her. That's yeah, I don't. But, I um, didn't see big bandages. So what did what did our resolutions likely look like for those companies? Did it say 12 years? Did it... My understanding is 12 years. The process, I spoke to a couple of people that got them. There was a submit the form, come in one meeting, wham, bam, and go and go on. And, and, and uh, how recently did we do those for other companies? It has been the last one, I think, was either 16 or 17, 2016 okay. or 2017. So we might be able to draw on Trustee Noel or Treasurer Palmer for some institutional knowledge if, if they recall uh, those proceedings. Right. 
you know, the most recent one that I saw was Kaiser, now Anderson Hauser, when they put their 30,000 square foot addition on their existing property. And, and you want it as high a number as you can get. I think statutorily, we're only allowed 10 years. Okay. So right? how did they these get 12 industri years? These were industrial de themselves. development yeah. districts, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah which, yeah. honestly, that would technically under the law, one could pursue an industrial development district here and request a 12-year abatement. I think part of- oh, You're not getting 12. Don't work, <laughs> don't, don't, don't work too hard on it. Yeah. <laughs> we agree on that. <laughs> so hey, John, just a couple comments for just you yeah, 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 yeah. to think about. So, and again, and again I, I want to emphasize over and over again, I'm, I'm for doing this. I yeah, 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 no, no, no. I what's, what's fair and what I think, what I believe is fair and reasonable. So so a couple comments. And again, guys, I'm not trying to, I'm really not trying to pick on you. But when you say new jobs, those new jobs are not necessarily, I just want to go through all your litany of comments that you shared with us today. Those kind of, those jobs are not necessarily going to be here inside. There'll be jobs, but I don't know if those are jobs of people who moved or new jobs or what have you. Well, no, there are new jobs. Those are in addition to the people that we're moving over from. Okay, even fantastic. But I don't know if those are going to be silent residents. Let me say that. Yeah. I, I can't, I wish I could tell you that they're all going to move here. But there's the property value, uh, the personal property is now $180,000, not $80,000. So I don't know if we're realizing anything personal property. Um, this isn't personal. This is the real. No, but they said there's there's taxes on personal property when they said oh, someone. Yeah. So there'll be more as they develop their. I understand. I'm just, I'm just listening yeah, to something. Yeah. And again, I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm just trying to, yeah, to, to be. To be in, in, and I understand the risks that you're taking, but those are risks that all businesses take. I'm in business, you're in business, we have all this. So those, those are all built in, in, into your risk profile uh, as our covenants, as our current interest rates, which ideally will go down here in 24 months. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, you said the costs are extraordinary. 10 to $15 million investment for 170 square foot building when done is probably not extraordinary. So the investment, the abatement expenses, the unrelated to improving the property other than abating what's there. Understood. So those, those those are just the things that you know when I kind of summarize why I think three year and, and maybe we can go a little a little more on that again. I, I want can I want to I as I share with most people I, I always find a good a good uh, when you find a good compromise is probably when everybody walks away from the table a little bit angry, right? That's probably when you found a found the right balance. Uh, but I just want to do what's fair for, like I said, fair for Sound Township. But as a Sound Township president and what you're doing for us, I want to make that. I, you Good know, for you too, I, Mark, Mark. It occurs to me that we've sort of rolled right into deliberation. I think we've got a public hearing coming. Well, up. yeah, we, we do. do. I mean, but we, I want to kind of I want to kind of share that with John. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, Mark. Mark. No, this is his presentation. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. I we're we're have a small, I'd like to think we're a small enough community and we're a community of people that we can talk about this a little more freely. I, 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 the only thing I'm aware of is that it's supposed to be a public hearing as part of this. And um, yeah, we're, while, we're we've been, while we've been going around the table, I'll, a lot of people have left. I hope they weren't here to speak during the public hearing. So I'm wondering if perhaps we should open the public hearing, give an opportunity for people to speak who would like to during the public hearing, whether they're here in person or, or participating remotely, and then return to what I think is kind of turning into deliberation. Um, so if if um, if we could open the public hearing, it's now 8.14. Um, so this is the public hearing on the um, 300 North Zeeb Road, parcel H0822-200-005 Commercial Building Rehabilitation Act Tax Abatement Request application. Um, is there anyone either present or remote uh, participating remotely who would like to speak to this uh, public hearing during this public hearing to this question? I'll just answer Trustee Brazil's question that actually was discussed earlier. Please come, so Brian. Brian, come out and say your name, and we'll have a seat. Hi. Uh, number one, I used to work for Creative Solutions, which then became Thompson Reuters. Um, so they were off of uh, Newman. So I actually looked it up. Uh, that number, I don't know quite where they got the whole number from. Part of it had to have come from Sio Township, but unfortunately, I don't pay for cranes and it's by the table. Uh, but at least $3.9 million of that number looks like it came from the MPC, uh, some sort of like performance grant for hiring employees. That was back from an article in 2002. Uh, at least part of that was. Uh, Drumo got their grant from what I could see. It looks like 20. 
2008, they got part of it and then they got an additional grant later. They're still here. Creative Solutions actually moved to Pittsfield. Um, it happens. And then they moved a bunch of the jobs in Mexico. Uh, the, uh, the other company is still on Marco and Plaza from what I can find. Um, I think this is a good thing. It does create jobs in the community. It does have um, some enforcement mechanisms. So if you know, they say they're gonna create 200 jobs and they create 10, you guys can come back and revisit this. There's that ability to come back, at least from the draft I saw of the agreement. Um, yeah. That's basically it, the, the structure point, but I knew you had asked about that. And we haven't worked there before. I think they had also gotten another MEDC grant, which is the Creative Solutions app that was revoked later because they failed to meet the requirements of the grant. Uh -huh. So, that's up. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, Simon Beale. I'm a local uh, resident. I don't really have many questions, but uh, just one or two, really. And I, I, this was more. Um, in just for some information, the uh, the flight came through in my mail. I'm uh, just backing on to the property. Uh, so, a couple of questions. What's your name? Simon Beale, B boy E A L E. Um, assuming that you move ahead with this, do you have a time frame? Yeah, so we're hoping to populate the building by the end of summer with the uh, R and D crew and offices and equipment start moving in at the end of the year. Wow. Okay. Um, and some of the timelines have been pushed back, partly because of the Silicon Valley Bank debacle, uh, and some of it because you know raising capital right now is, is hard for the companies that we're moving over there. So their timelines are pushed out a little bit. Right. More activity will be happening in early 2024. Okay. And throughout 2024. And are we, are we talking demolition of the existing building or is no, that no, yet no. to be? Oh, right. We're okay. staying within the footprint that we have. Wow. Uh, we're okay. going to enhance what we have if, if there's good bones there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, that's part of speed to speed to market is important to us. So sure. using what we have is, is preferred. I used to work at that building many, many right? years ago. Yeah, yeah. with ProQuest. Any, yeah. Well, anyway, so the spin -off. almost bought it in 2010. Oh, right, yeah, that would have been it. Yeah. Um, and uh, are we talking about specifically this that parcel, or are we talking potentially additional parcels? Or? We're talking specifically about this parcel. That That's parcel. the I1 parcel. We're, we're going to try to. We're, we will stay within that I1 parcel, right. which is 29 and a half acres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the final question is just the fact that we've got Honey Creek running around the back. And my wife just simply said, I wonder if this affects anything to do with Honey Creek and the quality of water, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a there are some heavy metals down in the old settling pond down yeah, there. Yeah. And we're looking at uh, you know what's the best practice to either cap those, cover a line the pond, or remove them. Um, my personal uh, preference would be to remove them and expand the pond and use that for a uh, geothermal source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a nice feature down there, so we hope to sort of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks very much. Yep. Thank you. Is there any further comment during the public hearing? Uh, yes. Uh, Rob Pattinson's going to speak next. After that, uh, Jonathan. Rob, go ahead. <laughs>
Jonathan. Jonathan is up next, and then Paula after that. Jonathan? Ah, now I can speak. Thank you. A uh, couple of things. Uh, like to to share first of all i've known uh mark for 30 plus years I think he's my first townie when i moved here like the first townie i met uh we we had a neighbor friend mutual friend um i've watched mark put in um uh drainage into the field so they drain better so the crops work better i've watched him rebuild the house across the street tear it down to its ribs and rebuild it and rent it out and make it a productive property. Uh, Mark's a stand-up guy. And uh, I'm saying all these things, I was going to say them anyhow, but uh, Rob Pattinson took, really took my thunder because I wanted to also make the exact same point. Um, I agree with uh, Mark Brazo that, that when you go into business, you, you take risks and that's normal. But taking on a dirty cleanup site, which... I'm sure no matter how much research they do now, there's going to be some surprises. Um, you know, they're locals, give them the tax abatement. I'm, I'm not generally one to, to look to do that, but we got to support our own. So please uh, work with us. Thank you. All right. Paula, uh, you can go ahead and then Pam Boyd after. Yeah. Um, I realize that uh, everybody would like to see something happen over at the MVAD. Um, I just know that I don't have the uh, business, but I've done a lot of reading about the Brownfield. And the one thing that I'd like to see is some type of business agreement. So nothing more is built over towards the uh, Honey Creek area. And when we say that best practice of cleanup that we have some type of uh, assurance that it will be not the cheapest, but the best practice for cleanup because of all those wells on, uh, including the Huron River. And I appreciate the people are local, but that doesn't necessarily always mean they're good. And um, I had some concern about a memo that I had read about uh, Linda working with um, Will out of his office. That was a little concerning to me. So, you know, I appreciate, I like to see everything stay local, but um, Mark Brazeau has the background and like, I'm, I'm into compromise too. I think that uh, there uh, a percentage of time can be worked out so that the abatement is good for Sile and good for the Smiths and good for the neighboring people around that area. But anyway, I appreciate everybody's work involved in this. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Pam Boyd. Go ahead. Thank you, Pam Boyd, a Sire resident. Um, as a neighbor who faces this property, I want to um, express my support for these efforts from the Smiths. In 2019, one of the pet peeves I had when Mavid was proposing a dense, ugly development, um, this property is at the one of the main entrances to our community. And by keeping the Dow Design building and bringing this building back up to its early glory would be um, a, a real good doorway to our community. And I think that it is worth um, supporting the Smiths and saving. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Uh, at this time, I see no other hands raised. In that case, uh, we can close the public hearing at 825. I have a question. And return to questions oh. and comments from members of the board. Trustee Carey. Um, the man that was, oh, he's there. He's behind John. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about you left. So you asked about the um, uh, the, brown, uh, the pond mm. back there. 
So the brownfield is to, to clean up the heavy metals, and is it the whole property or just, no, just the, the uh, building? Isolated. No, it's it's within the whole property, but there are isolated spots within the property. For instance, there's a small section inside the building where chemicals have leached through the concrete into the ground. That needs to be either capped uh, and with a vapor mitigation system or it needs to be cut and dug out and hauled off site and disposed of properly. Same thing with the metals. There's a concentration of metals down at the pond. They used to use processed water out of that pond and circulate it. So there's been an accumulation of metals in the sediment of the pond. And how long will it take to clean up? That's I, a good question. <laughs> I mean, I think once you start, there's a lot of sort of uh, prep work that needs to go in to make sure that we don't exacerbate the problem. We don't want to do that. So uh, I'd have to defer to Brett and some of the others on the best you know, method for cleaning the heavy metals. One method would be to just go in with a liner and cap what's there so it stays in place and it can't leach out. Um, another method would be to mechanically remove it, which is probably going to mean some pump and treat of the water that's there, capture it, remove the soils, haul them off site, and put the water back. Okay, yeah, so I was just thinking, um, it sounded like there was something that wasn't going to happen under the brownfield, and I must have misunderstood. But um, yeah, and if the brownfield is to clean up, it seems like it would be a total cleanup. I mean, we already have enough issues. Right. And yeah. then it would be transferred somewhere to be so it's safe for everybody yeah so then, we're a bait we're talking about an abatement which means we're removing it or abating right. it completely okay. there's not a partial cleanup here uh, the cap in place would be i guess an alternative method but right now that's not in my thinking okay yeah it, well i i would i think both those are really the two options right and you know there there's a cleanup and there is some sort of cap in place i would say in michigan cap in place or in the case of the building where the solvents are in the ground and there's potential potential vapor inhalation issue it would be sort of a cap with a venting system or a sub slab ventilation system that makes it safe to be indoors so it's an engineered solution mm -hmm. those are the more common ones in michigan the caps or the engineered solutions because they tend to be more cost feasible mm -hmm. and so we're looking at both so to your earlier question there's probably a couple of months to do some additional assessment to get a better idea of how far do you dig if you're gonna dig it out, um, and a couple of months to implement a solution, whether that's a cleanup or that's a cap. Um, I'm assuming a cap would be faster, but. It, it, it really depends. So on things like inhalation issues, mm -hmm. if the, contamination is discrete enough and it's not in water and groundwater in ways that complicate the issues, it actually might be faster to go in and dig it out. Um, that would be preferable. Yeah. So I think to remove it totally would be preferable. We already have enough issues here in the township. With other yeah, I think that's our, our preference because of va under a vapor mitigation or some sort of oxidation system, we've got ongoing O&M and uh, what we have to deal with. There's the you know, we still have to cut the slab to get the vapor mitigation system in. So there's logistically some challenges to do that. I'm more yeah. a proponent of get it out of there, haul it away, put it's it in case, supposed to be a problem. You know, and then in the future, if you decide to sell, you know, they would have to potentially deal with it or leaks or whatever. Um, so the Brownfield grant, grant, right? Or the Brownfield, no, um, I'm sorry. This is a tip. So what it does is Mark pays for it. And then through the taxes that he pays as a property owner is reimburse the cost of, of what he, he paid for. Through the brownfield. Yep. Yeah, through the, the brownfield, brownfield right. Yes. There's different ways. Okay, so I was trying to get a handle on just the brownfield part of it, but it's kind of, yeah, to see how long and how much you would need an abatement um, to justify. I'm very concerned about chemicals in our environment. Thank you. Yeah. So... I'm going to support this project. I don't know if it's three years, five years, six years, 10 years, eight years, but I'm going to support this project. The number of years, the devil's in the details. I think that's what the, the, we're going to deliberate later. So help me. Uh, you've, you've grown up here. You've got MIHQ uh, over on Wagner, and you've been there how long, and how long are you going to stay there? Um. We expanded into MyHQ on uh, the Gelman site in 2015, September of 2015. 
and we have uh, we have plans to expand there. We've acquired three 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 Jackson Plaza across the street for our expansion. So you're there for the long haul. We're here for the long haul. How about this three hundred RC? Are you going to flip it? No, no, no. Move. This is a long haul. Uh, you know what Rob was saying is true, and that's one of the differences in our business model is that we're the ones taking the risk on the infrastructure and the investment. We're we're trying to build companies that will put down roots in the community. And some of the way we attract those companies is by taking on some of that capital expense and that capital risk. And how about how about the jobs you're going to create in year one, year two? What what kind of? Um, I just sat down with one of the companies yesterday, and uh, so I think that their timeline is pushed off. I mean, we're looking at about forty additional people this year, just for the one tenant that's going to be there. Are they working from home or are they working inside of township? Um, I honestly don't know. You know. Are they going to be here? Are they going to be supporting our restaurants and oh, yeah. buying houses in and our I developments? And yeah. They, yeah, most of these, that. I should say, most of the, the people that are going to be working are, are not, uh, I mean, they're probably $80,000 a year salaries and up. These are scientists that are manufacturing uh, high tech, whether it's DNA, RNA, microfluidics, MEMS technology. It's it's not uh, basic assembly. It's pretty sophisticated. So you've got a high level of education and sophistication to operate the machinery or to run the process to, to build whatever it is they're building. And then what what is there an agreement that assures Sio Township that you're going to uh, make good on the commitments you have with respect to employing people or? Things in that regard? Um, as I said earlier, I think there's an opportunity. I've got to sign an affidavit, don't I, every year that, that attests to what we've done and that we're on track. So I, I think that's reviewed and there's opportunities to revoke it. And at the end of the day, when your abatement's over, whatever that is, when your tip's over, then we can smack you with a high tax bill <laughs> because it's gone up? It actually gets smacked. Uh, I was thinking through this the other day and I don't want to get into the details now, but in some ways, the short tax abatement is almost worse than no tax abatement because you have, uh, I can't write leases that escalate at that rate. And as we build out and, and add and add and add, our revenue stream isn't even hitting stride until you know 2025, six, seven, we're running at a negative. And so <clears throat> disclosing to our financial institutions that we have this big pop-up in, in expense in year three or four is going to dramatically change our loan covenants and our debt coverage ratios and our reserves that have to, which means we have to change everything up at the front end on our financing model. And it's probably going to divert funds that we might use otherwise to beautify the property into general reserves trying to uh, you know, accelerate anything we can do inside the building or just, you know, rainy day fund. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Well, in that case, um, we now have an opportunity to um, deliberate um, on um, the next agenda item, which is the tax abatement itself. So, um, we can go around again um, if people would like to do so. Um, should, uh, should we start at the same place, Trustee Noel? Actually, I'm going to ask Mark Reju a question. I just want to have a better understanding of why you're recommending the three-year tax abatement, just to understand it. From your perspective, mm -hmm. I mean, you're the one that spent the most time on this of all the board members, and you applied yourself to the issues. So I'd like to hear your rationale in more detail. Sure. So just to, for everyone's edification, I, we did walk through the building, and it has strong bone structure. I think is even Mark Smith would concur as well as Will. So which is great. And again, I'm going to emphasize this again. I, I am pro this project. I am pro Mark doing it. I like taking care of our own, taking care of our own, as they so to speak, our, our peeps, if you will. So that's all, that's all, that's all good. I love, I love all that. Uh, but however, I, I, my goal is to do what I think is fair for Silent Township, first and foremost, and fair for, for, for but also an incentive for Mark. 
So let me, you know, I kind of went in there with that view of the world, right? When I when I approached this project. So in terms of Mark's costs, Mark's risk mitigation, job opportunities, I can make those arguments for literally every every building, all the, every business. I can make that argument for every office building it is an incubator for new businesses. Although Marks are somewhat unique, I don't disagree with that because of the specialization of what he has to build. He has, although, however, uh, uh, some some of those tenants already lined up. Go. So, again, if I look at the, the cost that he's made in his investments, which I think he got a great deal on the property. Again, Mark, God bless you for that. Nothing wrong with getting a good deal. I love that. Uh, his investment, th those risk profiles and all that stuff's baked in, and I can assure you that the banks consider that far uh, much greater debt than you or I do. So a bank will not say yes to this unless they've done all their homework. Trust me, their banks are not in the in the business of wanting to own property; they're in the business of wanting to get paid back. So when, once I contemplated all this, I said, "All right, what would be good for Mark, yet good for Sio Township?" Three years. Felt like, you know, I looked at the number. I said, okay, that's, you know, what, what it's going to cost Silo Township. That felt like a reasonable number for given the blight issue, given the opportunity that will drive more business around Ann Arbor, given that it may drive more jobs in Ann Arbor. All those things sounded good. I would, however, consent to, and I know what Mark is saying about there would be a bump suddenly. You know, you're, you're probably, it's probably going to try to get at least three year leases, if not four, if not fives. Right, and nobody wants to see this huge ramp all of a sudden their cost. Maybe extend it to a four year. I would be, I'd be open to go going forward. Uh, I still, I still think that's a reasonable number that somewhat abates that a little bit or mitigates that 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 sudden hit. Um, that seems reasonable and and fair to to me, and, and more importantly, it's, it's to me, it's Sacramento Township. So again, I, I want to encourage Mark to do this thing, but I want to just do what's fair for Sino Township and its residents in terms of the tax dollars that we collect. Uh, I have no, I have all the confidence in the world that Mark will do the right thing in terms of, he's incented to make sure that he hires as many people as he can because he wants full occupancy. So I don't think I can hold Mark, a stick to Mark, the Mark's gonna want to do that naturally on his own. Uh, Mark has made commitments to the property to make it uh, pleasant for the residents uh, in terms of the berm and all that. Fantastic, so our residents are taken care of, that's important. So I think all those things are in place. It makes sense. We talked about trees and landscaping. You put those things in there that makes sense. I'm assuming that I'm not a brownfield expert, obviously. I'm assuming that our brownfield logistic folks are, and they're going to do their job. So I assume that all those chemicals and the concerns that you have will be will be taken care of and abated. There's mechanisms in place to take over. So I'm kind of not even putting that in my in my decision tree, if you will. So that's how I, Mark. You know, did my analysis and kind of summarize that in a document that seems to be, I think, a good workable solution for both sides. And like, as I said before, a good solution is when a good compromise is when everybody walks away from the table just a little bit angry. Right? <laughs> not, not everybody got exactly what they want. Right. Because I can argue that it should be zero. <laughs> Mark's going to argue that it should be 10. So where is the compromise? What is it? Where is the compromise line? Five. I was going to say about five. <laughs> Well, I, I, if I could, um, I realize I just I skipped back to trustees going around again with trustees, and I, I wanted to give our township manager an opportunity to speak, too, um, because you have, uh, Mark, been playing a, a leadership role as well, bringing, you know, preparing this and sort of shepherding this forward. And um, so I, I wanted to turn to you as, as, as uh, give you a turn to speak. I guess uh, two points I would make. One is informational for the for the board here, and that is we've talked about uh, this program in the Brownfields a lot. Brownfields not before you today, uh, not quite ready uh, in time to get that information. Get that so, information. so very in the very near future, perhaps next week or next meeting, there'll be a Brownfields uh, uh, decision to make. Two, that's a simpler decision. It's, it's more of a yes or no decision, uh, as I understand, as opposed to a how many years decision um, and um, I'm an Ohio guy where income tax is very important and isn't relevant here in Michigan if it was, this is project were in Ohio there'd be people um, clamoring all over themselves to have this, this project um, so I don't understand fully all the implications uh, there is a relationship between the brownfields and this uh, in the in the commercial development district, and 
as Nathan explained uh, to us, and I don't want to try to re, re, uh, reconstitute the discussion that was occurred here, uh, but the financial implications are are um, complex. Uh, and if I understand it uh, correctly, and I'm not sure that I do, um, the difference between three and ten is is uh, is not as great as one would think in terms of cost to the township. Um, uh, as I understand it, the, the, the tax revenue that we would gain in year four gets devoted, fundamentally, it, it doesn't come to us anyway, it, it, it gets devoted to start paying off the, uh, the uh, brownfields. Uh, so in, in a very simple terms, that's the way I, way I do it. In year four, uh, the, the revenue that comes to us wouldn't come to us. It would start to it would start to do the reimbursement of the brownfields. Uh, <clears throat> and and if you look at the whole time period there, then uh, I think what you're saying is if you took all the dollars, there's there's uh, that could cost more to do the uh, the heavier investment in the brownfields than on the tax abatements. I, I, honestly, I'm not sure that came clear uh, here. I, I heard, I've heard the presentation about three times, and it's complex. Um, so the you said at, at year three or year four, that's when the brownfield is kicks in. Well, or the re thought, reimbursement. Of the, not sorry, to answer that question. But if there, if wherever our tax abatement ends. And the money that would come to us, we would normally say, well, that money's coming to us now. But I don't think it does. Right. It, 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 it then starts to pay off the brownfields. A portion of it starts to pay off the brownfields. Yeah, all all a portion. A portion. So in, it is a little complex, but in the case of a three-year abatement combined with the brownfield request, together, whether that means township taxes are abated or township taxes are post-abatement and repaying a brownfield, Together, that would be 15 years before oh, the township. That's where, okay. Yeah, the other number. In the case of a 10 year abatement, that number becomes 17 years. And let, me, let me just add one other thing, and that is that, that this is a policy decision on the part of the board. Oh, I'm and, and I'm not the policy right. makers here, you folks are. But it's also a very complex decision with lots of inner working parts here. And, and I just wanted to make sure at least. The information that I understood, I was trying to put out there, so that this group was making an informed decision. It's a policy decision, not. And I'm on, on, the, I'm on the bureaucrat side here, not the <laughs> legislative side. Well, first of all, I've been through all of these abatements that you did research on. They, there was only one back in the late '80s. The business. Well, where Thompson Reuters are now, I think. No, 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 wrong, wrong. Anyway, um, something happened and they just went away. It's the only time an abatement, it just didn't work. But every other one has worked. Um, some properties were, they bought a piece of land or a building much like what you're doing, except not as bad. <laughs> they have been a really good thing for Sire Township. Um, I do have a question, and I probably should know the answer. Can this type of the rehabilitation tax abatement, can that be renewed? Do you know? Because IFTs can't say we granted like a five year and then you could come back and ask one time a renewal. I don't know if there's a difference between IFTs and CFTs. Yeah, I, I think that I, I'm not, my belief is that it can be, I wouldn't say renewed, but the, the maximum term of the tax abatement is 10 years. Correct. So I think if the township were to grant something short of that, they could there would be it. the option to extend okay. it. I'm probably using the wrong word. Yeah, 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 no, I, I appreciate um, the sort of 
uncertainty in the question, but I, I think also, um, you know, there's a subsequent step of an approval to the State Tax Commission. Yes, but oh, it has to go through yeah. people yeah. above us. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I think we had one that was that, that situation, but generally we gave the first, the full abatement, and it never was a mistake in my opinion. It was it lived up to what they said they could do. And as we know, many of those businesses are still here. So I support, and I support at least five years, at least. But when you talk about the payback, two years difference. I think that's the part that I'm not sure was clearly understood when we first presented this was the difference to the township in in local contribution versus state contribution, three versus 10. While it feels like you're getting more of the tax dollars sooner, in actuality, you're, you're spending more money reimbursing. For the three years. Yeah. yeah. That, I don't like that. Because of whose coffers it comes from. Right. right. Gotcha. So okay. you're spending 350 to save 130 versus spending 350 less to save 70. And another big plus we've heard over and over. That site is a disaster. Yeah, but you're sticking it to the schools, though. Well, that gets reimbursed um, from the state. The I state makes that up. check on that one. Yeah, it's not impacting local schools. The, state. the schools... Well, they're not... We you're, you're, impact, you're impacting their revenue is a graceful yeah. way of saying it. But I mean, maybe do another we way capture to look. any of the schools? No, 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 I didn't think so. We don't capture schools anymore. Well, and, and, and I think there's another point, too, and that is that there's a program that reimburses the schools the, for the difference that, right. that they would have gotten from... The taxes. Maybe it makes a difference. I remember having these discussions on roads, and I know that's a sore subject here about the fact that we pay our, our taxes, and a lot of that road money goes gets exported out of our township to use in other projects. In this case, going to the longer, we get to import tax dollars from other parts of the state. We share the burden with other other communities, just as they would share it with us if they did this in their township. Well, and in the long run, I think the benefit to the, all of the state is that you've created revenue from this site that would not have existed otherwise and that will pay out it's, over time it's, it's hard to appreciate the indirect jobs and revenue that it creates uh, which i can tell you will be significant so what would the direct benefit for sio other than the cleanup and the jobs regarding taxes to, does this there's just what what's the benefit to this the township well, the DDA continues to collect all their taxes. We have, we're not, that's that's a positive. The total tax base of the township rises. So if we're out of formula on the DDA side, we're helping there. Um, you know, it, it does bring jobs. It brings other, other potential supportive businesses into the area to grow and thrive as well. And then we're taking care of a blighted property right on our front doorstep. Right, but other than those, as far as the taxes go, so we don't, we don't, Get any taxes other than the base that you don't get any less taxes than you're getting today, right? Less so the, the base, that's the base. That's, that's the, the base. The base is maintained. It's the base on realty, correct? It's not going to decline any further. Um, <clears throat> after the tax abatement is off, even during the brownfield, the the voted debt millages would not go toward the brownfield reimbursement. So there'd be some benefit there. Um, and then post the brownfield, obviously there's a, a big benefit at that point. Um, and then personal property, whatever is tacked there. But that personal property, once they, gotta be, they'd have to come in and do but, their own. But the, but the chance of getting personal property I, or could be could be zero. That's, right. It's purely conjecture at this point because right now the new that if they file as a small business, personal property limits one hundred eighty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So unless each individual business has at least one hundred eighty thousand dollars in assets. We don't realize any personal property tax, so I'm not saying I'm not saying we're going to get zero, but the potential could be zero. We just you don't know. We don't know. We don't, we don't know. know. Right. So when I don't know, I just have to put a number of zero to it. Yeah. I don't know. So, you know, I'm generally in favor of a longer term, but I really respect Mark Brazo's business acumen. I respect the work you put into this, the research, your scholarship. So I don't want to 
you know, I don't want to not heed the recommendations that you gave, Mark. I know that this is a policy decision, that this is to some extent a number that we can all live with. Uh, I can live with a, a higher number. I'm not gonna, you know, I can live with a four or five or a six or whatever. I can live with a higher number, but but I don't know what what is the will of this body. So that's that's where I'm inclined. Somewhere, some something higher, maybe south of the 10, but something higher than what you're recommending with all due respect and not being to offend you and genuinely appreciative of the work you put into it, Mark. Well, I heard two people scream out the word five yeah, uh, immediately. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> five seems reasonable. Yeah, and the five, yeah, if it can be extended, why can't yeah. we put that into the, the agreement or whatever, five with the potential of extension? Yeah. With the law. Yeah. Well, and then because nice. it's going to be a different board in five years, yeah. potentially, except for Kathy. Well, <laughs> the building obviously have a different... Uh, Thank you, yeah. <laughs> All dynamics will be different five years from now, right? Uh, I, I'd be okay with five. I mean, you know, that's, I, I, you know, I'm happy to compromise with our board. Happy to compromise with Mark. Again, everybody walks away a little, little, uh, that's okay. <laughs> so, so I haven't spoken yet to the Please do substance of this. I, I um, was um, persuaded by your work, Mark, um, and, uh, the, and we toured the facility together with <clears throat> Mark Smith and, um, had an opportunity to sort of talk it through there. Um, and I um, I think what has sort of pushed me towards wanting to raise the, the um, number of years of the abatement was um, a meeting that you organized, um, Mark Thompson, uh, there's so many Marks, um, the, the, uh, with, um, with uh, Nathan from uh, the county um, where we really drilled down and understood the relationship between uh, the brownfield and how the there's a, a, a synergy with the abatement in terms of where the tax dollars are coming from, where the revenue is drawn from to pay for those different uh, costs. And um, so I I would lean towards um, pushing the number up if if the consensus is five years. Um, you know, maybe that's where we land, um, and there's an opportunity for um, you know you to come back. After as you know, as you get further along and and seek for an extension, um, I actually didn't know that was possible until I, I you and I were at uh, the county board of commissioners when they were considering the uh, their approval of the the, the uh, commercial re rehab district, and um, and then I think it was um, I'm trying to remember who it was who brought it up. One of the commissioners brought it up, and and I so that was a learning experience for me. But I think. Given that there is that kind of real, you know uh, potential re relief, um, if you need it, uh, if you find that you really need it, and you can come back and seek that extension, um, that would be where I would land. So, is someone ready to um, maybe modify the motion? Could I ask a question? Sure. So, the brownfield will have to come in front of us again. That so that was just the presentation. The last or the. Uh, public hearing for the brownfield? Yes, the, the, the brownfields will come before you, but all that is, is not nearly as complex as this presentation. All that is, is resolution uh, to approve it. The, the, the uh, Washington County actually administers that program. So uh, it will be a yes or no question uh, endorsing the brownfields or not. Oh, clear plan. We could have done that tonight. <laughs> Well, um, it wasn't ready. No, oh, still, it's not ready. Okay. We're still there was, uh, that was our intention, but there were some details that weren't uh, finalized yet. So they're working on the plan still. The county's working on the plan still. Modify the, uh, yes. uh, we have to modify it. So we just yeah, have I still to want to make a decision tonight if the other was going to be affected well, negatively or positively. The, the next one is, is simply a yes or no. Okay. I think in the resolution, it's it's actually the highlighted text on page 188 of your packet. We would be changing. We would be changing um, the second, the end date for from three years. Uh, we should change it for the, the period from three to five, right? And we'd be changing the end date from 2026 to 2028. Eight. So, um, assuming that that takes care of the adjustment, 
um, that we've just all talked about. Is someone ready to move the amended resolution? <coughs> Moved by Brazo, support. support by Palmer. Uh, and this is the um, motion to adopt the attached resolution as amended in support of a commercial building rehabilitation tax abatement for the facility located at 300 North Z Road. Um, should we call the roll? Do you want to state what the amendments are? Just, just for the record? Yeah. To, just to clarify, in the final, um, well, in the resolved clause, um, it would change um, the period from three to five years and the end date from December 31st of 2026 to December 31st of 2028. And I believe that's all we need to do. With an extension? With a potential extension? I think that's built in. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? It is, okay. All right. We would have had to have taken it out if we didn't want to. So it was offered by Rezo and supported by Palmer. And are we ready to call the vote? I, I have a quick question. Where is the reference to a possible extension? Yeah, I don't see that. That's is that in a whereas clause? In the whereas clause, third uh, from the bottom on the front page. Oh, on the front page. <coughs> I might just add that this uh, uh, resolution is drawn from a sample or a graph resolution provided by the uh, state folks who run this program. I'm sorry, Mark, you said on the first page. Right here. Right here. Right here. As this application was approved for less than 10 years in consideration of a request oh, to extend okay. the exemption, if any, will be based on an increase in commercial activity creation of employment, retention of employment, prevention of loss of employment, and other similar community benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Rojo? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Noel? Yes. Reiser? Yes. Okay. Um, motion is, or the uh, resolution is adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I would uh, love for you guys to come and, and visit us at my HQ, see what we do. And that place is blowing. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've toured it. It's um, that was yeah, a few years. That was a few years ago. It's, it's an impressive. It's an impressive <laughs> operation. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll look at it. So this this brings us to this brings us to our last. Um, item, this is uh, K1, possible action, consideration of a permit for public fireworks display for Dexter Day's committee on August 11th, 2023. And this, unlike the others, I, I realized um, was left out of the consent agenda because um, in preparing it, um, Clerk Flintoff uh, determined that there was um, some information missing and therefore recommended denial. <coughs> Which, of course, if we included in the consent agenda, would not have been easily accomplished. So, um, I guess uh, we could discuss that, or we could just um, um, fireworks, we could just, right? We could just defer it. I don't well, think that we have to deny it. Do we, we don't need to defer it. Um, I, I talked to her true. late in the day uh -huh. and asked her what her objection was. And she told me that the issues have been resolved. Oh, oh okay, good. Who doesn't want fireworks? I mean, That's come well, on. I, I, I think <laughs> you want, you want the, I think <laughs> like pyrotechnics. The yeah. point is, yeah. you want to have a responsible. <laughs> she actually addressed it in an update to your guys' packet when you loaded it this afternoon, or at least when I did it. Okay. I haven't read it yet. What it says on this one, what is it says in the swimming, what is it? He's more up to date than the rest of us, I don't think that. All right. Well, somebody's paying attention. <laughs> You've got to read the you have to keep reading that packet. It keeps changing. So. All right. So in that case, um, on the on the uh, reassurance of from Trustee Noel, do is someone prepared to make a motion to approve the uh, application for the Dexter Days committee? Um, uh, fireworks. Sure, I do. So, uh, moved by Carrie. You supported by Riser or whoever. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I support. All of us. Okay. We're supported wow. by Riser. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
All right, it is approved. Oh, <laughs> that brings us to our final public comment. This is a time for members of the public to speak for up to three minutes on any matter under the purview of the Board of Trustees. Uh, we still have some members of the public here in person. Uh, would anyone like to speak? No? Um, is there anyone participating remotely who would like to speak? Um, we have one hand up, Pam Boyd. Go ahead, Pam. Oh, wow, you're cutting right to <clears throat> um, online. Uh, Pam Boyd, a SIRE resident. First, thank you, Christy, for running Zoom tonight. Um, second, I believe this evening, Supervisor Hathaway opened the report section of the agenda by saying the reports are attached to the packet. Information from Clerk Flintoff and Trustee Carey's April RAC meeting are the only attached reports. Thank you, Trustee Riser, for speaking your concise overview of last night's Planning Commission meeting. Where is the Supervisor's Report? Where is the Treasurer's Report? For the last couple of meetings, these reports have been painfully absent. Actually, these have been um, the habit of these two for the past uh, two years. It seems with the, excuse me, um, is there background noise? Yeah, we're, closing, we're, the we're closing the door. There's some discussion yeah. in the hallway. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, it seems with the township several issues, reports from the treasurer and the supervisor should uh, have much to say at each meeting. Instead, the absence of said report shines brightly like a full moon on a cool October night. Also, interim manager Thompson. It would go a long way if you two could give a public report of what you have been working on over the previous two weeks. It is my understanding that you are strong in the area of communication. While our problems are not your doing, residents would like to see more open communication to help rebuild trust that is still very much lacking. Communication from some on this board receives a failing grade. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Pam. Next up is Jonathan. Go ahead, Jonathan. I'm just kidding. You guys have a good night. Thanks for a good meeting. Thanks for getting out early. Take care. Thanks. At this point, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see no other hands raised. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by riser. Support by I'll do it. Um, no. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. We are adjourned. At 904. Recording stopped.